Simon Rodilla, tile setter by trade, Italian born, American for half a century, builder of defiant towers. I know I want to do something. I, I, I say, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. For 30 years, the man lives alone in a house with a bed, a chair, a table. With the music and the faded symbols of a time when he was young. something else in the house, a dream of vast structures. For 30 years, every day, every moment outside his work for a living, in the light and in the darkness, Simon Rodilla labored to express the dream. Shells, broken bottles, pebbles, shattered tiles, with the discarded, the unwanted, the useless, with the debris of a machine-ridden civilization he avoided. He gave color and texture and vitality to the towers as they arose out of his inner necessity. With steel girders, with wire mesh, with concrete, with a bucket, a shovel, a hammer, a chisel, and with his two hands, Simon Rodilla built, inch by inch, the huge and complex structures that look down from their heights upon the plain. became a part of the landscape, the neighbors living under their shadow were sometimes doubtful, sometimes tolerant, often bewildered. I don't know what it is myself. I don't know what it is. I've often wondered what it is. There's rumors about what this might have been. Some people thought that during the time of war it might have been a secret radio tower. This is just a work of, of, uh, of, of art, of an individual, don't you think? The gentleman that made it here, I remember about almost 10 years ago, he was still working on it. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a piece of artistry of here, and uh, I guess he gathered the material here and there. To make a pretty scenery, I think. The people have come and he can make that place famous. Around here, anyhow. Well, my uh, estimation about it is not many people seem to know anything about it. Because I lived here since 1940, and I didn't know anything about it in two blocks of it. I was on May Avenue, and didn't even know nothing about it. I don't want to pass and see it. It was believed that uh, Tokyo Rose was born here. Right? And they said, well, uh, she was born in Watts, and most likely she was born here.
Simon Rodilla listened patiently to everything that was said. Then he continued his work, unchanged, undisturbed. Some of my people that say, what is he doing? Or some other people that they thinking I was crazy. And, uh, and some people that they say, he's going to do something. As he was planning his towers, his mind often turned to the past. He had a deep respect for men like Galileo, Michelangelo, Marco Polo, Columbus, martyrs, builders, explorers, men of stature. He hoped that in some way his work was related to their tradition. Yet he sought nothing for himself. He was content to think of great men and to build in the direction of the sun. He was undistracted by the great devices and disasters of his era. Radio, television, radar, electronics, the blinding atom flashed across the modern scene. He went on bending steel into girders. All that he wanted to do could be done with the simplest of tools and with his hands. It began in the man, a stranger in a new country. He was untrained, unskilled, but he had an urgent need for expression. The elements worked together, driven by a sense of dedication. And slowly, the formless became ordered. The wire mesh and the concrete welded the separate parts. The circles of steel embraced the supporting girders. The scattered objects emerged as designs. I never had a single helper. One thing, I couldn't hire any helper. I don't have no money. Not a thing. If I hire a man, he don't know what to do. A million of times, I don't know what to do myself. I was wake up all night. Because this was all my own idea. towers of Italy recalled from childhood may be here, and the minarets and all distant places of worship, and the gilded domes dozing in hot jungles, and high, cold, aspiring Gothic cathedrals, and all man's slow, tormented, enduring steps toward some light undefined. The builder signed his work with the imprint of his tools and with his initials. 
His eyes were now lit with the quiet pride of the craftsman. I had it in my mind to do something big, and I did, said Simon Rodillas. 